chance, please take a minute, read minutes, and then I would entertain any other motion. Second. Second. Questions, comments, concerns? All in favor? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, old business. Which pond is back? What's the deal here? Well, I'd suggest handling that that we're going to bring us in a new mylar with the planting changes and the bond, changing the bond to, from 10,000 to 15. We didn't get the plans. Uh, we discussed the difference was the 20 foot on center spacing. Mm -hmm. uh, they're good with, uh, they want to do seating and seat the whole area and say it'd be a minimum of 20 by 20, but seat the whole thing. <coughs> but they were supposed to bring us in a plan by Thursday, which doesn't mean Thursday, so we'll probably we'll get it next week. Put it on the next agenda. Okay. Right. Do you have concerns about that at all? I don't think so. Again, it was an old, it was an old moonscaped area, mm -hmm. which uh, has been cleaned up. The more concerns would be the new area of development that they're doing. So, mm -hmm. well, um, they haven't even started anything out there yet, right? No. Okay. okay new business. It looks like we're back to Milton Mill Road. Mm -hmm. huh. Hotel property. Come on up. Yeah, yes, you, you can, can grab a another bit. seat if you want, if you guys both want to come up, or she sure. can stay back yeah. there and yeah. tell you which is sure. your room. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. <coughs> so we've been working a few yes. months on this project here. They're still missing a little bit of information, but they're going to come tonight to you the basic outline of what they're doing. So you guys will have some homework to study and review. I think we're waiting on wetlands delineation and the DOT entrance permit for the facility. Um, the wetlands delineation would be as the road currently goes in there now. Uh, and their activity is going to be in this area. There's currently a logging road that's been there forever um, that does go through some wetland area where it's not mapped as resource protection or poor soils or anything on us, but it is, it is actually. So they're working on delineation out there. The DEP would allow them to bring in as much fill in the existing road as possible. It's just when they want to widen the road, they got to do the calculations on the areas that are wider. Um, How long is this potential road that's coming in to get to the area that needs to be? Uh, yeah. 12, 1,500 feet. So and it's not all, there's just a couple of areas, and I don't think you probably have anything for the first 7,800 feet. Yeah, I, um, I actually got the preliminary start of the delineation today, um, and it looks like there's actually just a small section where the wetlands kind of crosses the road that's there today, and I'm looking at the map quickly, it looks like maybe 50 feet. Mm -hmm. So So not like we thought. 
right? Right. When you use the wetland map that's here, that yeah. the overlay, it looks like a lot more. Um, but from the, the survey that was done that you guys probably looked at for the subdivision and then working with Rick Jones, who's a wetland delineator, is he's done some initial looking. So, you know, we want to understand are we tier one, are we not tier one, are we tier two? Because if we're tier two wetland permit, we're likely not going to be able to make this kind of thing work. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we're at right now. I need to confirm with him exactly where we are and then we'll move along in the process as, you know, we work with you as well. Great. Can, can you help us, you know, me, locate this in regards to the uh, rest of the parcels that we try to be here? Yep. Yeah. So we just did the subdivision. They are going to be the back lot here, the 85 acres. Section. Yeah. And that is the lot, I think, had a little resource protection and shoreland zoning on the back side. Yeah. Right in this area here, which they're not going to be. Oh, let's see. Yeah. 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 It's about 500 feet to the area that's disturbed already. just a preliminary pre-app meeting get you guys the information answer some questions see if the board wanted to do a site walk out there so so what's in your back of your mind what's the plan so our thought is to basically create a barn that is rustic in nature but nice that you can hold events in and so our hope is to have our private residence there and host events our focus is weddings but not to say that there wouldn't be other events that people were interested in. I think I saw a banquet on the sign on the way in. You know, those kinds of ideas would be really great too. Benefits work functions. Yeah. yeah, so really the design is to give people maybe a destination area to come and, you know, check out how nice it is and create a nice field area. Um, I have hopes of making small orchards and things. You know, personally that would, would lead to good things for this business as well, but, but that's really kind of the generic idea so far. So, so I guess in my head, I, I have, I guess, a wedding venue, I guess from a previous lifetime ago, when, when, when I, uh, and, and what you're saying seems pretty much a single building, yep. um, open inside. Correct. Yep. Uh, yeah, so an area of about 50 by 70, that would be wide open post and beam type structure. Mm -hmm. um, and two side areas of the barn that would be about 14 feet in width along the sides that would be areas for a, a groom suite, a bridal suite, um, a, a bar, bar area, bathrooms. restrooms, things mm -hmm. like that, some storage. But but generally, yeah, nice open space for it. We are potentially also looking at um, creating a second smaller structure to be more of like a chapel. If, um, we'd like to do events all winter, so if we have a larger wedding and we need more space for that inside, we can't necessarily set it up properly. So we're looking at doing that. Whether or not we do that immediately or a little down the line. What kind of numbers are you looking at as far as how big are your events? Um, so we're looking at up to a fire code. I think our max will be 233. Um, so I think in here we said 249. Yeah, so we want to work and figure out, hey, you know, with our idea of the structure, what what is it supposed to be? Our, our goal would be around the 230 mark, working with Ken recently, we're thinking, you know, hey, 249 is right under the limit for needing a mass gathering permit. We don't have any anticipation of getting that large. And I think that the average wedding we'd expect is really like 175 or so. But, you know, getting to the top of it right around 249, and that's obviously um, dependent on fire codes and reviews to say that, yeah, your structure can handle it, your septic can handle it, and all of you know, everything that's related. So, so this is preliminary. We've got our ideas, but we need to make sure that what we do down the road after kind of receiving approval for the general use, we make sure it lines up with that. 
you suppose any of your proposed buildings will be visible from the world? No. I don't expect so. No. And then the home itself, detached? Detached. Yes, detached. Correct. And there, there is no plans for the home in the in this documentation just yet, but we were hoping to keep it closer to the road, uh, but we want to figure out the wetland situation before we say, hey, we're going to put our house here, and then, you know, it's wetland. We don't want to obviously do that, so. Do you, do you ever see this morphing into a, uh, a restaurant? That hasn't been in any of our initial plans, not for kind of regular business, more of one-off events. Um, uh, we do have some potential thoughts of, you know, we plan to live here. That is that is the plan. Um, if in the future it made sense for it to become kind of a bed and breakfast, we could come back and talk about that again and, and, you know, go from there. But that's a potential future opportunity. But currently we're planning on having, cave, like, exterior caterers come in for the events. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, we don't feel, we're not going to be doing any of the cooking on site. Yep. So well, we have a kitchen prep area, which won't have any, like, ovens or stoves or anything like that. The caterers will bring in whatever they need. Yeah. That way they can prepare, you know, the salads and be inside and not outdoors. It's an ambitious plan. It's <laughs> nice. I mean, it's nice to see. It's nice to see. Yeah, our hope, you know, our, our kind of thought is just this is a great kind of business. We, I feel like, and I listed a couple of items that I think it could bring opportunity to local business, florists, decorators, photographers, wedding planners, you know, DJs, bands, things like that. I, our hope is that, you know, it's a low impact use to the, to the town. You know, we don't want to disturb anybody by any means. So what's really nice about this piece of land is that there's enough land that we can get out kind of away. So any of the noise that might be made will be far enough away. And, and we've actually done some noise testing preliminary to say, this is how loud a typical wedding would be. And this is out in the open. This isn't even in a structure yet. Mm -hmm. And we're far off the property line and well within the decibel levels that are that are in the ordinance. So, so we're, want to bring a business that you know is beneficial to us, beneficial to the community, and really doesn't impact anybody negatively. That is that is the goal. You'd be hard pressed to beat the decimal level of all the five sleep and iron tape. <laughs> <laughs> you need a very good band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they're gone by eight o'clock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Getting that, that age group's getting older. Harley's <laughs> <laughs> taking a note of that. Yeah. And so white's still got people. Any other questions out there from anybody? I mean, there's a lot to look at, and certainly we need some time to get right. through I mean, this. We can go through anything you all want, or we can let you all read through your own things. Um, my concern would be just because I'm in the hospitality business, mm -hmm. would be the drinking or driving. You know, there's there's not a whole lot of hotels nearby. Yeah. And what would be the plan for people who are overserved? Well, I mean, um, so we would like to get our liquor license, but we're unsure if that will be able to happen right away. But we would only hire professional bartending services. They've been trained to know when someone has been overserved. You stop serving alcohol. 45 minutes to an hour before the event is over. That way, no one is being served a drink and then they're leaving. Um, there are certain, you know, in the wedding venue industry now, a lot of people are actually hiring shuttle services if they do think, you know, not necessarily that someone would be drunk leaving the property, but if people are drinking and that's a concern of the people having the wedding, they can hire, you know, a bus to shuttle people back and forth from the hotel or a house that they choose to rent or anything like that. And so in kind of some of our research, we've seen, you know, there's a lot of rental property in the area, especially kind of lakefront, that would be desirable, I think, for a lot of the people coming to these events. And then we're not too far from the Sanford area. So it's, you know, we, we want to be rural because it's that kind of thing for the business, but we don't want to be too far away from a lot of these, you know, hospitality areas that it's, it doesn't make sense for people. So we're hopeful that this is a happy medium. Who, who's your nearest competitor? There. A few around. Um, we were just looking at. Um, and Farm is fairly close. I think they're, they're in 40 the, um, minutes, a half an hour. They're in the Waterboro Lyman area. I forget the exact town. There is one in. We were just looking at this one. Is that Dan and Brooke got married at? Yeah. Tumbledown. Tumbledown. Tumble yeah. yeah. They're about 
25 minutes away or so. Mm -hmm. So they're probably the, the closest, I think. Yeah. And then you have a lot, um, a little bit northern, you know, northern New Hampshire, northern Maine areas too. So, would you see yourself using it as a concert venue? No. You know, more just weddings and. Yeah. Yeah, the concerts haven't been part of our our initial thoughts, and I think that you know through discussions with you guys, we want to keep it as open as we can, but we don't want to open that's up to something that's yeah. going to be you know negative. So. Not even. A Jimmy Hendrix retrospective. <laughs> <laughs> I'm open to it. <laughs> I mean, you know, we definitely foresee bands because people often have bands at, at their weddings. Yeah. But, um, just holding a concert hasn't really been something we've even discussed. Uh, all the trash taken off the site from a dumpster? So yeah. the plan is that we will have a dumpster on site. We are hopeful and want to work with vendors that will take their trash off site. So <coughs> we're going to have the, cap the capability to make sure it's stored appropriately. Carry and carry out. Yeah. yeah. I tried to discourage them on the first few meetings we had just to lay it out, and they kept coming back. <laughs> so we got a good discussion. I didn't want to crush their dreams, but <laughs> it's a huge venture. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at this point, I mean, we talked sprinkler systems, fire marshal permits. Uh, he's done a real great job laying out the parking and all the facilities. He's, he's been doing uh, sound meter testing with, uh, I think he used a grass trimmer or a chainsaw or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, sites. Uh, they sites. They've seemed really uh, progressive to not want to bother the neighbors, but yet have a great asset to the community. So what do we have out here in the back? This Dustin Curtis property to the yep, uh, resource uh, protection. That's all resource protection on yep. there? No, he's talking about this area here that would eventually be yep. could have been developed. So they're thinking this area here generally, so this is your resource protection buffer all through here. And it was about five hundred feet, four to five hundred, so oh, I see. So nobody's going to do anything in this back side. So. so that's even adding to the local space that's so, there. Yeah. The noise so you had a couple of people here, and uh, the lake here, and iron tails out here. So one of my first thoughts was, does the planning board even think they want to go out for a sidewalk out there? That's basically... Yeah. That long road is accessible, right? Into the. I, yeah, so we can. Yeah. You either, you either want a truck or we can park at the road and walk everyone in. Um, I would not suggest taking a car out there right now. It's not quite ready. You'll be kind of take a look at how, which wet area you were discussing earlier. So which it, it doesn't show up on the map. It's, it's not yet. necessarily a wet area that we are able to see. It's forested and shrubbery wetlands. So it's something more that a professional goes out and it's like this plant is. Yeah, yeah. if we walked can, out there, we'd be able to tell. Yeah, yeah you'll see some damp areas in the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I wouldn't. <laughs> But um, if you know what you're doing, yeah, but a lot of it, you know, it looks dry and there's mm -hmm. something on it. Seasonally dry. Right, yeah. yeah. Do you know when you're going to have the wetlands delineation report or map back? So, so I have, we, I actually yeah. I emailed you it and I do have, you know, a flash drive if you want, real quick. It just came in today, so. You guys think you'd have people staying overnight or camping? Not on towns? our property. Yeah. So you'd have like a. We put in the conditions that we'd leave by a certain time or. Yeah. Yeah. What time are you thinking? Um. I mean, we'd like to be midnight, one o'clock, but that depends upon what we all kind of agree upon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I agree. We you know we'd like to be at the. The midnight one o'clock range we've seen a lot of areas be earlier than that and kind of just want to work through what does that mean and you know mm -hmm. what are we saving through that kind of process so it's earlier there's more people on the road so it's not just, i don't know you know if they leave at 11 there's going to be more people on the road coming home on a friday night than, mm -hmm. the than if they left at one in the morning so i don't know yeah. what the difference is so this is showing where the wetlands are mm -hmm. 
Um, has he flagged this at all yet? I haven't been out to the property since, and mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to talk to him, but there, there's a chance that it could be flagged. Yeah. Yep. So I don't think we'd be worried about all this area around here, but just where the road's going through. Mm -hmm. so, right. So at least it's going to give you hope for the tier one permit. Well, yeah, it was actually... We may not even... Yet. Oh, you'd be on. exempt on the 4,300 square feet. Right. Well, that, that would be That's the ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah, we did that with the company. Well, because originally, the original map showed a huge grouping of it, so then we were definitely looking at a tier one application. Yeah, initial thoughts, it looked like a 700 feet of the driveway might have been considered, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. forced to shrub well. And with us expanding mm -hmm. it to 24 feet, it was substantial. Right. 24 feet, yeah. And yeah, so we, you know, whatever width of a driveway makes sense, you know, we know there needs to be two-way traffic, fire trucks need to be able to get in and out, emergency vehicles and whatnot. Um, but we always want to disturb as little as possible, too. So. I'm pretty sure the town asked for 20. Is that what it's okay? I think I just saw that, too. 20. When, when you go back to that, that overlay of the, the map, um, the, the next one back, the big one, no? Something. The one that had the, the, the original picture, the original one that was there, where you were showing the wetland, the beginning of it, the end of it. Um, no, it came in off the flash drive. Oh, the emailed yeah. wetland delineation. Okay, that one. Where again from here in perspective to what I have here are we? So do you see the little clearing where it's brown? Um, the, so there are the squiggles, the squiggles where it shows the road going through. Yeah, right around the road. Yeah. Right around the, the road left. going through. You can see that um, kind of brown area. Towards the bottom. Towards the bottom. Um, where it says limit of preliminary wetland investing right here. Yeah, right there. <laughs> that's the old log landing. So that's right. the old log landing. So yeah, we're slightly above that. Okay. We're kind of up in that area. So up in the high dry area. Yeah. yeah. And we're also open to, you know, as as we get closer to actually doing it if possible, we'll make sure that, you know, if we have to trans move what we have drawn. The thing is set in stone. You know, this is we've gone on walk property, come up with some basic ideas and we'll adjust as needed. Mm -hmm. Tom, do you recall a um, number of years ago we had a site visit out here for that uh, subdivision. subdivision. There was a lot of talk about a DRR back in there. Do you remember that one? Mm -hmm. I think uh, Roger. Yeah, about that talk too. Not Roger, uh, Brady. Brady, yeah. I, I have never seen it corroborated. No, no. Mm -hmm. So what are we referring to? A deer, a deer yard. There's some maps, uh, I and W have, they mm -hmm. kind of hold close so they'll tell everyone where the deer yards are. <laughs> and they'll um, <laughs> gather in the winter oh, in, 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 in the Hillock <laughs> area. Mm -hmm. but, I would think with the limited uh, development on, was it 85 acres? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're thinking somewhere in the realm of six acres being touched with most of it being a field, honestly, so, you know, less than 10% of the property. Contour-wise, this is all fairly flat, we had 20-foot contours in between, so it's all fairly, this is a good area right there. Of, uh, and then we, we, when we did the subdivision, we noticed that it, it got steep right through this area here. Yeah, which peers onto the other yep. property. Yeah, that other parcel up in mm -hmm. there. So what do you think, everybody, about taking a walk out that way? Or what do you want to do? I don't know if it was work conditioning. You should be after the wetlands with the units. Yeah, you know, you know, flag them out. That's probably true too. Mm -hmm. We don't know that these are flagged yet. Right. Mm. Can we tentatively set something? That's what I was hoping. You know, otherwise it's going to end up being further down. Um, 
you're thinking, oh, what are we thinking? <laughs> Early, earlier on Thursday is not going to work for some people. Yeah. Do you want to do an off Thursday? Uh, oh, an off Thursday. How's that work for you? Um, See, we were thinking you were early today. <laughs> we hadn't started. It would take you longer. Somebody said six minutes. Um, so, so, is, can you do for seven? Can you guys do a seven o'clock? Yeah. That should be no problem. Problem. Can you link? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think they'd be? Um, have it delineated for next Thursday, or do you want to push it? The following week would be a meeting night, right. so you want to push it the week after. Three weeks from tonight, I guess. No. It's either one week or three weeks. Mm -hmm. Probably. Would there be a way for us to contact yeah, just the shoot person meeting tomorrow meeting. and yeah. let you know? Yeah, because if we could do it next week, I think that would be great for everybody, but yeah. I don't want to waste your time either, so. Yeah. Well, we can do it. We can get info to everybody or you. You'll get it. Yeah, but you can check in and see if it's on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can yeah. call get yeah. Yeah. We can let them know if it's off. Okay. So tentatively on the 27th, right? Yeah, I think so. 25th. Yeah, no, the 26th. 27th. 27th. Yeah. Thursday, I believe. Yeah, so today's the 20th. Yeah, right? the 20th. Yeah. At 7 o'clock. Are you meeting here or going directly up there? Um. I could leave from here anyway, so we can meet here at 7 and yeah, seven maybe. And after that. I, so I'm not even exactly sure where that entryway is mm -hmm. over there. I drove by it the other day, but I still wasn't sure exactly where it was. It's got a fence in the state. It's got a mm -hmm. gate, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Do you want to just have them delineate the wetlands near this road area that they're doing in this outskirt, or do you want them to delineate all of it, even if they're not going to be near it? Wasn't tuned in. Sorry. I was <laughs> on my calendar, but I was going to the site because next Thursday. Do you want them to just delineate this wetlands that they'll be disturbing, or do you want them to delineate all of this in this area that they're not going to be anyways near? I'm comfortable with the area that we're dealing with. Yep. That's the whole thing. That, that seems crossing. fine to me. Yep. Road crossing area. That'll make it easier for the person doing the delineation. And then during construction, we'll be requesting it anyways. Mm -hmm. yeah, this this will need quite a uh, uh, septic system to handle the rest of the facility. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> What's hard with those septic is they'll design it assuming that 249 people are using it every day. Versus exactly. in this case, it's once a week. So yeah, uh, yeah. there's a flow meter you can install for the amount of water you use, and if you're using paper plates, there's a reduction and stuff like that. So um, July 27th. Yes. Everybody's good with that, right? Seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. Good. And we'll say here. How about six? 50, 645, 650, and then we'll go from here. No, no, I just leave you there. Do you okay. know where it is your Yeah. And then she was on the original sidewalk. Oh, okay. <laughs> the subdivision sidewalk. Before, well, I guess you were there too, probably. Okay, easy. Any other questions from anybody? So we have a little homework to do between now and uh, two weeks from tonight. Maybe more than a week. Uh, to go through, the, go through the book at least to have a sense of exactly what uh, these guys want to do. Go from there. Uh, do you have any other questions, Ken? No, like I said, we've been working on this for a few months. He's got it pretty well shooken out. He's ready to answer almost any of the questions. Yeah, I was going to say, if you have questions that come up as you're reviewing, you know, feel free to, I guess we can use Ken as kind of our intermediary, and I can, we can do our best to come with an answer for you then, you know, so we're... Great. On top of that. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> You're hired. I just did one too. I was going to come with you. Oh, nice. I'm not, I'm not over here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all.
Oh, you look, is this their map? She has Wait, is this your map? Yeah. She has one. No, no worries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next. Another conditionally much smaller. Much smaller. <laughs> wow. The energy and enthusiasm of you is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the days, they are long gone. <laughs> so I didn't remember the days. <laughs> okay, Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm Nancy, I've been here in uh, 2011, that was before the planning board, because I, I wanted to build a very small camp, Camp Bella Soul, right on each road. And it's a camp for um, nonprofits, and it's been going great. It's very small. Um, lots of, uh, it's, kids have had lots of great experiences, and other folks have used it too, other nonprofits, and it does my heart good to see people there. Um, but since that time, I'll go on to something else. Since that time, um, the property adjacent to the camp came up for sale. And I tried to ignore it. <laughs> and I couldn't. One more? So, um, today I'm talking about the property on 1813 Atrium. So the camp is on 2814 Atrium. And this is Great East or Moose Pond? Great East. Great East. Yep. Second basin. Um, so the camp, original camp is on 28 Fulton Road. My house is 1725H Road. And the new property, oh my gosh, that's the camp. Yeah. That one like that. So originally Big Brothers Big Sisters was the primary use of the uh, camp out there. And since then, she's purchased the uh, lot next door and has originally built a storage shed in this general area here. And now she would like to do... Now I would like to offer some opportunity to local starting artists and hold artist workshops. <laughs> Don't you say starving? Starving. Starving. <laughs> yeah. Both. Both. I mean, it's amazing. I came from I came from the corporate world, and now I'm in the art world. And artists are really starving. I mean, it's 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 tough. Um, and I love the enthusiasm that artists have about making their work and creating their work and teaching their work. And I thought, well, what a great way to kind of offset uh, the operating cost of the camp because I don't charge them the profits to go there. And then one thing led to another. Before you know it, I was in Kansas. My storage shed, I'd like to use as a workshop. So, it looks fairly similar to this. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have pictures. I have pictures that, first of all, show you the bottom picture shows the view from H Road. You can see you can only see the driveway. And then And then, um, so the view from the road, you can't really see anything but the dirt driveway leading up to the property. The picture on the top there, when you're at the top of the driveway and you look to the left, that's the storage building. And if you flip it over, you will see that the bottom picture is the building. This is the storage building. Yep, right there. And then if you look at the top picture, you can see, now I'm calling it workshop, and through the woods on the left is where the camp house is, the original camp house on campus. And it was that the original picture that Ken had up front? Yes. This is looking at it from the other side. So it's tucked away nicely, I think. And it's just a wonderful, peaceful place that would be ideal for people to um, explore their creative sides. You know? And also it brings good, um, be good for the community, local businesses, you know, artists are not really a bunch of rowdy people. <laughs> How big is that building? It's 30 by 40, 30 by 40. 
And the same kind of thing that we were talking about previously, it's like a posting beam inside, it's all just oh, open. Yeah, it's, it's just open. It's not like posting. It would not be really nice, but it's not that nice. No. It's just open. Um, lots of places for parking, handicap parking next to the workshop, and it's flat, so no problem getting in. There are no stairs. Parking, you can't even see the parking from the road. Um, and really, it's that whole parcel. We don't have a lot of um, neighbors. Is it? It's still two separate parcels. It is still two yeah, separate right. parcels. Yep. Mm -hmm. Did you just say that but eventually it would be merged together? No. Or will not be merged. No, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And what are those? Just camps along the water, and that are uh, adjacent to them? The yes. Yes, it would be a separate driveway serving 1813. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the existing driveway? Yes. The first picture. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's the driveway. Okay. Yep. And also, I called in the Acton Wake and Watershed Alliance because when I came here before, they were concerned about possible erosion walking down to the beach, so I had them come back. And they checked everything out and said it's looking pretty good. They did put in a water bar mm -hmm. closer to the swimming area. Um, and they also put in some um, steps. So they say no problems with um, any of that. Anybody? Questions? Comments? Anybody see them? What well, questions? So what? No heat. Is that what you mean? Do you want to limit it to seasonal now or? No, I would. I think I would like to um, leave it open if I could, just yeah. because I never know what's happening, mm -hmm. what's coming next. Um, it's, it will be seasonal this this year for sure. Um, but you know, it's nice to have options. Yeah, options are good. What questions can I answer for you? It seems like there's a big difference, uh, distance between the camp and the storage, but it's only a couple of hundred feet. Yeah. And when she purchased this parcel here, it came with a house on it. Yep. Uh, you going to rent that out or? I would probably um, have that available um, if there were overnight workshops for students to stay there. Huh. Yep. Overflow from a wedding facility? Oh, gosh, I know, huh? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, Those cows can be rowdy. I don't know. I have to have a group of requirements. You know the server? Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. That's really not fair. It renders that a little bit more handy. Yeah. And it is not pretty. Just, just uh, yeah. so I can understand the sure. proposed sure. buildings that are going to be on 1813. Oh. This is not existing. That is existing. That's is the storage. Okay. And I've changed it to okay. workshop. And that. that's what we're looking at there. These are just parking spaces. So you're going to transform the, the uh, parking garage type workshop into a uh, more of a studio space. Yeah. Uh, okay. So there's yeah. essentially, in your proposal here, there's, there are no new buildings proposed. No, okay. okay. This storage shed was new. Yeah. 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 Any any questions? So daytime workshop? Yes. You might do a weekend workshop? Uh, a weekend, uh, yes, that's possible. Um, I'm thinking like um, the workshop itself wouldn't be uh, any earlier than 8 and no later than 8. I mean, not really right. Maybe I missed this. This is restricted to painting. Oh, no. So would there be power tools? What do you like? Would there be power tools? Oh. Woodworking? Um, there could be. It's not in my plan. So what about electrical supply? You need maybe a 220 amp service to run some of them. I've got two. You do have it there? Yeah. I always put, I, when I did the camp and then, you know, I'm starting to really learn about all this construction stuff. Although I never want to do it again. <laughs> but you keep coming back. No, this is the last time. This is it. She this is the last yes. time. Yeah, we put that in another parcel that's open. You know, down no. <laughs> <laughs> so she constructed the storage building last year, year before. It's been a couple of years. Uh, she's been working on it. And the thoughts were, 
years down the road she'd do something, but she's been approached by stabbing at us for a place to do. <laughs> I'm part of the Stanford yeah, Association. Connections. Well, that's right, your connections. Yeah. To the place. Yeah, uh, they have the connection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, I, do we think do we need to take a look? Are we good? Come to a come to a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to look at it, right? Excuse me. I think it says may versus shall, but I don't know if you guys want to group it up the same night. It's gonna get dark. Yeah. 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 June. I'm gonna yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is getting back around. Yeah. Yeah. I assume we have fifteen hundred feet to walk. Well, in the first one. No, I think we should stick look for this a week from today because it's possible the, the wetland delineator may not finish with that work for a week from now. Yeah. To go on that one, we do this one instead. Double bluff? Oh. It's like I don't see. We, we can take it. That would be my tendency. I don't feel yeah. so very confident that we'll be ready, but. Oh, you don't? You don't? Well, I don't know. One week. I mean, it, it, but it could be done. You're just playing that. Yeah, thoughts. he's found it, so I would imagine you have to flag it as you find it, so you know where you've been. Well, whatever, whatever you guys want to do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't mind, you know, piggybacking them, but it's I don't know. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the driving is going to take some time. What's that? The first one might take some little bit of hiking. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, if we did this one earlier, 6 30 or so, yeah. and then I can bring Yoli up at a different time, or she can stop by at her leisure. I mean, can you guys do a 6.30? Yeah. Can you guys do it? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if we make it to the other one by 7, but... This one's simple. Yeah. So you can get out of the car, look around, say, oh my god. I mean, we, <laughs> the driveway is going to access the area we're talking about exactly. right here. We're yeah. going to be able to drive right to it, right? Right to it. Okay. Yeah. Does the driveway have to be expanded for the parking lot being no. designed? No, it's no. All... when they constructed the, the storage shed, they really made a lot of room in front of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Side of it, yeah. you know, it's very flat. Once you, once you go up the driveway, it's very flat, yeah, and open. All right, anything else? Then? Uh, there's always a chance to get out early, yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. Nancy. All righty, thank, thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Yeah. So, so we'll either be right out here. Six fifteen. Yeah, say six fifteen, and that way at least we have a couple of minutes to play with it. And I'll be there by six thirty. And... Okay. Thanks okay. again. Thanks very much. <coughs> Change my. <laughs> I just added another one. <laughs> Next. Yeah, best practical location. Big side roads. Firm. Side drive, looking at demoing this place. Moving it back a little. A lot of these older camps, when they dug into the hill behind, there's not much behind it to relocate it. Existing camps three feet from the property line, 48 feet from the water. The new camp would be 54 feet and then centered in the lot. Increase. 
back to Wakefield Watershed, working with them with stormwater mitigation. Septic, uh, what's the septic. deal there? On this back area up oh, in here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, lakes on this side. So it gets it back a little bit. Originally, I thought there was a little bit more to get, but as the contours show, there's not much more there, and uh, it gets tight here pretty quick. Because we, we try to get it back to 50 there if we can. If we can, yeah. <clears throat> What's this thing right here again? This little op right here. It's entranceway, deck type. Yeah. Portal thing. In and out. Just an overhang so that you're out of the rain when you try to get in the door. Is that yeah. what you mean? In the parking. On the septic. I think it's in like Oh, it's just the driveway up there. I think so. Yeah, in general. There's not a lot of room on the site as it is right. now. My eyes are jumping here. Right on the lake side, it's big also. Circus. You can see what's cut right into the bank there. Yeah. And, and so how big is this house, approximately? Twenty by fourteen is the house with a twenty by ten and a twenty by eight floor. Mm -hmm. So it's not very So all of that would then just be encompassed into a new structure plus the thirty percent. Correct. We're still are we only talking a thousand square feet at the end of this, this project? Yeah. Something that range, eleven hundred. I don't know if I'll get to eleven hundred. It's not, it wouldn't go up. 832. With the, the, the new total? Yeah. But you do get the free basement. Yeah. yeah. Any other concerns that you had when you were uh, going over this? Thing? No, there really wasn't much room. It's great that they're getting it off the sideline, putting it into the center of the lot. Mm -hmm. Because the currently, I think it's about three feet off the property line. Hmm. We, were, and we were up there, right? Looking at something close by. Yeah, it's been a few years since I think we've actually done a site walk on Lakeside. Any comments, questions? We good with this? Motion? I think the motion we uh, approve the recommendation. Second. Any uh, any other comments on the motion itself? All in favor? Okay. Good. That would have been great. Another BPL on H work. This one here, uh, they're looking at removing the whole structure, getting rid of um, all these 
retaining walls in this area here, not just stone ones. Um, they've already removed this here. The insurance company has required them to get rid of this. This is the house here, the back side of the house. So. This is the existing house. We're just looking at the back side from right there. It's 50 feet from the water. Uh, the new one shows 80. It's going to be a little tighter on this side here than that 80. I'll forget that number. Uh, CMP lines running right on the back side of it right there. So they've uh, brought it right up to the right of way as far as they could. So what are those numbers that you're saying it's going to get moved back by? It's 50 right now. He has it as 80. And I just got to double check the plan to see if that's to the corner of that house. Or to it the looks front. like it's to the green room. Yeah, that's what I thought. Eight feet. So 72. Mm -hmm. It goes from 50 to 72. Mm -hmm. So still 22 feet. Is there a reason why the the uh, house itself can't be turned parallel to the lines? I had thought we got it back quite a ways. We would only gain a little bit more, and then it just looks at um, all the vegetation in this area here, and it doesn't look into the lake as well. It's mm -hmm. kind of would be turned to the um, dead end cove side. And there really didn't seem to be that much more to gain mm -hmm. back in there because we're already at 80. So again, like the other one, an increase of 30%. The building envelope right there. So there's the 100 foot line right there. So actually it's negative. It wouldn't be, it's probably less square footage in the 100 foot zone than this existing camp already is. Gotcha. And the concrete being removed, this is all concrete right here, and he's removing about 700 square feet of it. And what was that, just parking? Concrete parking? Boat there? ramps, um, yeah. all types of. But well, we're not getting rid of the boat ramp, right? Oh, so it's the driveway that goes down in there? Yeah. We talked about removing it, but um, it didn't, it was a, more of a concern for the erosion if we've removed it. Square footage between the 100 foot and the lake is probably less than the camp that's being removed, so he's actually losing his 30%. But that's because of his design. Correct. Well, that is what we're pushing him back out of it. Oh, okay. It's hard to see the boat ramp and the 
I guess I think I am a little concerned about that uh, concrete in the front of the house. Yeah, that was my first discussion with him, and he's had uh, Act Wingfield Watershed out to do some mitigation, discuss. Uh, about 700 square feet. Give us a picture of every tree on the lawn. It's kind of a broken up surface. I'm guessing it's showing this picture five. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Do the same one, you I think so. Oh, no. It's very dark. So he's got a vegetated buffer going in on the waterfront side by the stairs. This is the. So do you think this is it? Yeah, you know, that thing then probably leads to this. Mm -hmm. So the area he's proposed to vegetate is next to the stairs here uh, and along the side of the stairs here. And that just drops right off, obviously, from the yeah. stairs. Yeah, vegetate that all up, and then he's proposing all of this here back into where the camp was vegetated with a set of uh, infiltration steps going back up. Because we looked at uh, if you remove everything, you've got to haul a ton of fill back in to fill everything back up. So leaving it down at the grade it was seemed the, the most uh, best avenue. Does the rainwater just come right down that driveway? It didn't seem that bad. And we had talked about um, establishing a vegetated buffer right at the end of this path down here, crushed stone, drip line trench or something like that. So he's working with Acton Wakefield Watershed in to mitigate as much as it, uh, that he can. So he, he does not at present have a boat ramp? Um, I almost think you could if you had to. Depends what you had for a boat. Yeah. Small personal watercrafts or something like that, maybe. What is the what is the rainwater coming from? Is it the incline coming in at the top of the drive there? Uh, these are... Five foot contours, maybe? Coming down through here. One foot contours coming down through. list of um, issues he wanted to address that worked off of the numbers and the letters I think were trees. So he's going to leave those stone trees there and then he's going to retaining walls. Uh, getting rid of the block ones here but leaving these stone ones there. And then and what's going to happen in that area? Uh, this area here would just be filled right back in to get it back up to grade. So you'll have some steps that come up through here, some infiltration steps, brings you back up to grades and then back into the house. Oh, back there. Like a walkway to the house. Yeah, yeah. So leaving these retaining walls here, these stone retaining walls here. What's happening in uh, number five? It's the dog leg that is. Uh, Stepping to the right of the ground, yeah, right there. This area here? Yeah. Uh, nothing's proposed there. What's the topography of that? Does it slope down to the wall? I don't know why the contours don't go all the way down in there. They, they do on one. this one. Does it yeah. show better on the map? Yeah. They get a little closer together there. Yeah. I mean, there's some slope there, right? Yeah. The top's about 581 and the bottom is 574. So drop seven, seven feet, seven feet in um, 30, 40. The house is the original is 50 feet back. So yeah. Well, whatever it is, he's got to have to address it. 
maybe in the scope of the project. Right? <coughs> well, if he's not touching anything down here, then I don't know. Uh, he's vegetating this area over here and this area over here, and he had a stone French drain basically going across the end of this. Stormwater wise, uh, we get rid of this here and then the new camp would be addressed with drip line trenching all the way around and some rain gardens they pick up coming down through or uh, gutters and downspouts into catch basins of some kind. As you get closer down to the water, are there any other measures interior to the stone wall or total effect? There really wasn't very much erosion out there that the um, French drain at the bottom of the ramp area wouldn't, wouldn't take care of. Um, it's just, it's loaded with pine needles. There's some of the few people that don't come to camp and break everything up. Yeah. So are we, are we comfortable with this? Do you, you guys, uh, do we need to take a look at this? Seems like the biggest question is that um, driveway, like dog leg on the, on the right hand side, that um, yeah, this area here, that maybe could be revegetated with the, some of the trees that are indicated to come down. Yeah, so normally this area here would be revegetated, and the state allows grasses as a vegetation, and then the points removed from the trees. Within the 100 feet are supposed to be planted in the general area. We look to put them between development and the water, get the vegetation down and through this area or anywhere else. Um, there are a lot of overgrown pines in there that are dead standing that need to come out anyways. I don't think we'd uh, be looking at much replanting behind them, especially with the CMP poles back there. Uh, right. Power lines cutting right through there. So it needs more room to replant anyway, kind of. He's going to have a huge area right there. That's where you're going to ask him to put the plantings. Um, I, I'm focused on this area down in here. Yeah, right, that's what we're saying. Yeah. yeah. And of course, during my sidewalk, that was the first attraction, right? Because this was just all concrete, and it's all concrete around him, and all concrete all through here. That all gets removed, too. So I think he's a little low, low on the 600 square feet number, but he's pretty good on the calculations he's done, so. How is he doing on the uh, percentage of impervious cover for his, his lot? 20%, he must be pushing 20%. Yeah. Did you get a number for that? 19.42. Is what he's at right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Wait, do this he's, right now he's at 19.023. We've had that one. After construction, point four. So, oh, so he's not really changing. No. Well, we should try to help him get pull the ball right now. Well, if he's under twenty percent, then he's he's within the guidelines. Uh, the difference is currently seven hundred seven thousand one hundred ninety four square feet non vegetated. Finished seven thousand three hundred forty four. So. Um, he's less than 200 square feet more vegetated, and it is a fairly good sized lot. But he's taking out that concrete of what 700 feet you said, and that's that's only going to add. Uh, that's in the calculations, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. To get him under the 20 yeah. percent. Exactly. You said it's 7,000 square feet in purpose right now? 7,100 and something. Yeah. And he's only taking 700 away. And then he's coming back with 7,300. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'd be inclined to ask him to increase the 700 number, but personally. What about the idea that you're disturbing more? Concrete is whether it's good shape concrete or 
you know, rec you know, er areas. It's hard to tell it's concrete just because the amount of pine needles on top of it. Yeah. But this whole area that's outlined is concrete. So all the way down from the CMP. All the way back, CMP all the way down, all the way in through. And then he's got around here, this area here was back here. So and he's proposed pulling this out, that out, removing the camp, revegetating. And then this area here, and this area here, revegetating. And then and that's still concrete right now. Those two bottom ones down there yep. right now. Yeah. So that's where most most of the, the right plane is the yeah, this one's really good. Right. And this one around. That way. Yeah. 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 He's less than 20% lot coverage. But he's not really reducing his impervious on the lot coverage after he does his improvements. And, that's, and I would be like to see a reduction there of some sort. I would um, agree if we were at 30 or 40% lot coverage, but he's below the 20% lot coverage. So he mm -hmm. meets the minimum. Right. It's, yeah. it's like saying you're 10 feet from the side light setback, but we'd like to see you 13 or 14 feet. You know, he meets the 10 foot setback, yeah, so he, yeah. he meets the minimum standards. And yeah. of course, we can ask for anything. Yeah. And it's, it is unique just because there's so much concrete. And that was the first thing that attracted me when I made my initial site walk out there is there's a lot of concrete out here. Think. You think they'd be first to putting plantings through the concrete if they, you know, made holes in it, put their plantings right in? You know, because trees don't mind that. No, my initial thought was to cut it right there and pull that right back out and revegetate. But of course, nobody's going to want to give up their boat ramp if they don't have to. Yeah. So the other thought was as, as you went to this side here to mitigate all this area here. Mm -hmm. So if I go and go down through and then right. catch it at the end of the ramp and just get the stormwater in the ground. But it's, how many feet is it away from the terminus of that little boat ramp? In quotes. Um, how far away in feet are you from the, from the edge of the lake? Five feet maybe. This depends on if the tide's in or out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a, you said, a rain garden or some kind there, and that's going to get destroyed right away when we start moving boats in now. Um, more of a um, crushed stone, not so much a um, water bar there, but just something to catch it as it comes off the concrete. Uh, and at least it's not asphalt, so you're not getting the oils and stuff out of it, and it has been down, my guess would be, for over 50 years. So I would think any leaching off the top has, and they love the pine needles on it when I was there last. Uh, it's been a family camp for a long time, so he's just got it, and you know, so I can't say he's not going to start blowing the pine needles off. But Exactly. <laughs> give you a allowance for those for impervious but they rescinded it within a couple of years because the grass isn't growing up through it. 
for the roundup is not allowing the grass to be. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, you know, when you put them in your driveway, you're driving over them, you're plowing over them, and they're filled with sand. Exactly. Yeah. The, in, the intent is there, and maybe it's used right sometimes, but uh, they rescinded it pretty quickly and took away the credit that was given for impervious. <laughs> now, that area of rip wrap right there, that looks like a pretty big area. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. And then water, you see, most of the water is directed into that thing. I think it's just this cliff that wraps around there, and when I usually see all this, look at that thing. It's just like what kind of rip are we talking about? Just like six, you know, like softballs or exactly round yeah. rock, not brush. It's not yeah. true rip wrap. They brought it in. When I look at this type of construction with these walls and concrete everywhere, as I just picture, um, they got home from the war back in the fifties or so, and. This is what they did. Yeah. With the materials they had on site and you know. Well, we are comfortable moving forward. We uh what do you want to do? I I guess if Ken feels that the water the device to uh, enable the water to be infiltrated at the terminus of that what we're calling the boat man. Is, is truly going to be effective. Um, I'd like to see that thing gone myself. Yeah, me too. That was the attraction. As soon as you go there, that's exactly where you go to. So, and they probably could even cut in some um, water bars, the rubber raises, yeah. and make some slices in this and get a diversion so it's not coming down into the infiltration trench at the bottom of that. But. And I mean, they could take, if, again, I don't know if we have control over that, but you can take the concrete out and not necessarily lose the ability to put a boat in the water, but then have not quite as solid a, uh, yeah. you know, material that's really funneling the water down and give it more of a chance to be, be, be directed differently. And I think, I think that's just the key word, is if you direct it off of this ramp and put it into some rain gardens in the side, um, and it's not that long and wide that you've got a ton of storm water coming off, but currently how the camp is now, uh, it's dripping on these two sides, it's concrete everywhere is on this two sides, so all this storm water is mitigating down and heading this way. Yeah. So the new camp, is go the storm water is going into the ground right off the camp. This is all revegetated here, so none of this storm water is even, uh, you're not going to have any storm water from the houses coming past this area here. You're still going to have some coming down the driveway, but he did talk with uh, Acton Wakefield Watershed about a couple of water bars to stop it. So if you've eliminated all the water coming down from H Road down to this area, now all you have to do is mitigate this little bit of area and that makes it a lot easier. Mm. Eliminate the volume and the percentage and then just treat what you've got. So this kind of all slopes this way, that's why he's vegetating this area here and get it to absorb into here. Now really all you're dealing with is a couple hundred square feet. And that's really a lot easier to deal with. And do you think that crushed on that at the end there would, would be able to handle that 200 square foot or not? Yeah. Of course it's probably in the water table when it goes down in. You know, it's going to hit that mm -hmm. and come down through. Ideally would be the razors on this or something that can bring it over to the side, but I don't know. You're probably not going to have that much volume. Are we able to throw that into the condition to put that kind of a thing in there? After Wakefield Watershed, that was one of their concerns also. So between the detention that went across the bottom of this and crushed stone. I think that's going to mitigate most of it again because we've reduced all the volume coming down into that area. Is there a photo that shows that to any advantage? I don't have a good one from because it, it looks like the forest. Oh, because of all this stuff? I'll show it to the uh, slope a little bit. Mm -hmm. No, because they'll come with pine needles. Put them on snow. Yeah. 
if it can be addressed, I guess, in the, in the stormwater mitigation. Okay, what do we got right there? Yeah, so this is the area they're talking about, the revegetation there and there. So that ramp and is to the left, right there's the ramp. say so otherwise somebody would put a stone wall there like they did all the way across here and yeah. up there that would be on retaining wall if, if it was needed so I, I think it's fairly flat there and then they have a pump house right there this is a pump house this one yeah yeah do they have like an access road some sort to that thing like, no you can't it's not like the, I mean is it a drill well or I think it's water well oh okay yeah. so like a point I think it's sucked out of the lake. I guess I would prefer if we could um, consider in removing the concrete that, that uh, uh, comprises the boat ramp area, as we're calling it, and revegetating that whole area, I think would make this thing more sensible to me. I don't know. It's a little hard to visualize it, but I'm looking at a contour drop from 581 at the top of it down to uh, 576. So it's a, what, a six foot, uh, right. five foot drop over that skin. I don't see what the scale of this drawing is. One inch is 20. So it's five feet and 20 feet. I mean, if you can't, we're not busting his chops, uh, if you can't launch anything other than a canoe or a kayak there, it's got to be a bad way to do uh, address that little tongue of concrete by removing it and maybe revegetating that. That would be my preference anyway. It's just, in other words, it's going to, if, if we don't do it now, it's going to be a maintenance problem for Mr. Martin and uh, the folks who follow Mr. Martin's ownership. Yeah. I, I defer to Ken's site visit awareness of how feasible it is to address that. Are you comfortable with going back and talking to him about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
to do something with the um, and the important to not inhib inhibit his ability to do whatever he plans to do with it at present, you know, leaving it there, if we're not infringing on his his uh, ability to, to launch a watercraft, as you're calling it, um, then let's try to address the, the problem of uh, stormwater management, maybe in a more um, effective way as long as we're not curtailing his use significantly. Good evening, Mr. Martin. Yep. Kenny Ball up and acting. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. You're uh, live with the planning board up here. We're discussing your project. Okay. Hey, your boat ramp out there, do you actually launch boats out of that? Yeah, we've got almost all the project approved, but as we discussed on site, that boat ramp is just uh, the planning board stumbling over that. Uh, we've talked about the vegetated areas by the stairs, the vegetated areas up by the camp. Uh, would, you, would you be opposed to a buffer strip of some kind and removing some more of the concrete in the boat ramp area? Yep. yep, that's what we had talked about is, as you were working with Acton Wakefield Watershed and getting a couple of rubber raises, bringing them over to Rain Gardens. Uh, how much are you guys thinking to remove getting a good 10 foot buffer in there from the water's edge? <laughs> how long is that whole talk like? Yeah, that's what you say, 250 square feet? Yeah, uh, it's probably. How far from the crest of the hill down to the water? 20, 25 feet, or? Um, probably not even that far. It's really, really steep. Maybe, maybe 20, yeah, 15, 20, if I had to put a half gallon of water. You guys be good with a 10 foot buffer? Stumbling what he's got now, right? Yeah. yeah. Would you be comfortable with a 10 foot buffer down there? Uh, basically, uh, removing 10 feet of. Um, uh, the concrete coming off of the water's edge and some erosion control mulch and a little bit of vegetation. Yeah, I think that's an okay compromise. So how do you guys do with that? Do you think? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, I'll probably give you a call next week and let you know where we're at, but it looks positive right now. Okay, perfect. Thank All right. you guys. Have a good day. All right, bye. All right, that being said, any other comments? Will we uh, accept the application of Martin to uh, what do you call it? This the location permit. Second. Do we have one? Comments about the motion itself? Yeah, I just want to get the verbiage straight on the. As is our plan with the removal of this and adding a 10 foot vegetated buffer at the bottom of the boat ramp? Are we, it, is it 10 feet from the water or 10 feet from the bottom of the existing cement? I think it's pretty close in there. That's a little vague. Well, I mean, are we removing 10 feet 10 from feet the water or 10 feet of concrete? 10 feet of concrete is not right. I think that's why you have to lose okay. 10 feet of concrete. Uh -huh. yeah. 
So I think the high water comes up to there, mm -hmm. and we just we want to make sure it at least stays out of the high water. And then we give mm -hmm. some room to put some material there to to uh, the truck to take care of some of the, the, the end of it without it having being already in the water. Yeah, great. All right. If all, any other comments? Um, it can be so we'll leave that 700 number alone, and he'll just change it up and, and subtract this from the 700 and leave some amp above. Is that the no? I the thought of can we increase the 700 number to include this? Correct. That's how I saw it. It'll bring up to about it'll get 800, up to 19. <laughs> yeah, 800 square feet instead of 700. So. Yes. As per plan and including. 10 feet of um, vegetated buffer at the bottom of the boat. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, good, Jeff? Good. Yeah, I just want to. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I'm glad you did. Very good. Anybody else? All, right, all in favor? All right, great. Thank you. Yep. Just Thank you. Okay. Next. Yes. Next. Well, let's put it Oh, I think that's just boilerplate. Boilerplate. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to talk about that. I wanted to just throw that out to you. Um, what's it for? came from me, Yuli. I know I didn't type my name on there, but it really came in. But I, I, uh, Ken and I had met with Ed, as you can see from what it says there, basically with his concern and I guess the selectman concern um, about areas of acting that uh, they've gotten some complaints about. And he wanted to know, you know, what our ordinance said. He wanted to know what the state said. He wanted to know, uh, you know, what we thought. And by the time we got all done, we were basically realizing that we needed to see the uh, what it was referred to as the property management book. And I don't think that has shown up yet. I think if it had, you would have seen it. She um, she ordered it. Yes, I think she said she got a PDF electronically. So yeah. Um, maybe I can pull that off and I can see it anymore. Same people that make the building code have a property maintenance code. It's adopted in Saco, Agonquit, York, Kittery, those areas. And I could name this thing. That's what's coming there. Uh, good name is mostly for development. A lot of the concerns are junkyards that I just don't have the time to yeah. deal with because I'm in the Shoreland Zone so much. So some of the additional talk was to leave the Shoreland Zone alone for a while and go deal with the junkyards, but um, that doesn't make sense so, right. to me. But I told them, you tell me what to ignore and what to go do, and we'll do with that. But we've got. Probably last year alone, about 250 trees were still chasing that were removed that needed replanting and closing up on a lot of other issues. We've just got more on the showland zone than we can deal with. And I think the last paragraph kind of gives you the sense of what Ed's thought is too. I mean, he's not out there, you know, banging the table to, to do something like we have seen in the past. It's more, you know, kind of let us see what we want to do and go that route. He had some idea that maybe this could be done at a future special meeting, but um, you know we had some discussion about that too. You know whether that's a good thing, not such a good thing. You know whether you, but obviously we're a long way from that. You know, and one of the other things that we were talking about is the fact that we think that there are other things in the ordinance that need to be adjusted by us over the next block of time, year or so, continue to fix what we have been working on over the last year. And maybe this is something during that time period we can look at too. Um, but for the time being, we're on hold at least until we get a look at this property management material. And Ed will be looking at that also, I'm sure. May I have a question? Sure. What were the complaints that were submitted? I honestly don't know. I, I'm not wasn't privy to the complaints. Most of them were uh, junkyards. And one specific individual probably had almost 20 vehicles, got them down to two or three. Another year later, 15, 16 are there, then they register them, got them down to a couple. Um, so that's some of the concerns. 
you get into the property maintenance code, and that's what we'd have to take a look at and strike out a lot of stuff we don't want. Um, the grass is too tall, the paint's peeling on your house and stuff like that. And I've never seen that or never thought of that being adopted in rural Acton. But, uh, some of the other complaints were a bunch of farm equipment in people's yards, uh, chicken complaints, things like that. So my thought was there's, there's enough rules and regulations in the junkyard ordinance to take care of the junkyards. It's just there isn't enough time in the day to take care of them. So we're looking at adopting some language. From not that, even possibly from that document. That's probably a better word. I mean, looking at it and yeah. just kind of seeing where we're at, kind of the deal. I was looking in the definition. I was trying to figure out what, where we are right now. This is an automobile graveyard. It's just a yard, field, or other area used as a place for storage of three or more unserviceable, discarded, worn-out, junk motor vehicles. I mean, that doesn't. How do we even That's define? A a junkyard? That's an automobile graveyard. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can't drive it up the street now, then it is one of the three vehicles. But if, but you can drive it around, it's unregistered, it's not. It would, to drive it up the street, it would need to be registered, insured, and... So that's what you're saying. So inspection not, sticker. So it's your your spare truck to use in the wood lot is considered a... That would be one of them. Would be considered one of them. Okay, yeah. and now is that? And I've usually ignored the plow track. This is the real that. question, though. Is it is that per property or per in individual living? Per room? property. Per property. Yeah. So you have a family, two you know two families living yeah. there, and you got six people. You can only have three jump cars. Three only trucks with six people. Six people. Correct. Okay. All right. But the. Agricultural vehicles, where you write the side of the town with the name on it, that doesn't count. Right, you get it registered yeah. as a farm vehicle. And when the price of steel was high, we didn't have a junkyard issue problem because the crushers were taking it just as quick. Everyone was making a ton of money. Price of steel's fall, everyone's collecting it. And in my opinion, because I'm not very mechanically inclined, I can't even change the oil on my vehicles anymore. So the days of having three or four Ford Escorts to keep the one on the road, those are over. <laughs> Yeah. You're not maintaining, taking parts off and working. You've got to run VIN numbers on a car to make sure you have the right parts nowadays. So yeah. those are kind of gone. But there's places that have, you know, three or four hundred pallets around the place. So we right. had a house last year. But what, what would that, that would be considered under a junk yard, that would be considered uh, discarded scrap or junk to lumber? But what if they say it's a fire? Or it's defensive. Yeah, I mean, it had yeah. It, yeah, that's difficult to know. That is. So, with the pallet farm, you know, I took some pictures of it, sent it to the town attorney, and said, Do you think it's a junk yet? He says, Absolutely. Of course, maybe he's looking at a week's worth of work, too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the last individual we yeah, had. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a tricky one. I don't see how that is necessarily. I mean, say you had firewood dumped. Well, if they just have a couple three hundred pallets, there's probably a lot of other stuff on the property too. Right. Yeah, and most of the complaints we get at Milton Mills Road. You go from the beginning to the end, and there's seven eight of them. So, but we're not worried about junkyards you can't see from the road. If you do you select your enforcement. Them. Pick on Mr. Smith because you're saying see you're him. picking on people you can see from exactly. the road, but the people in the back you can't see are we gonna? Yeah. Um, I happened to do a flyover town a couple of weeks ago, and there's a lot of stuff in the backyards, oh, yeah. which yeah. we ignore every day. But yeah. is it the junkyard that I'm offended for because it looks like crap, or is it the things leaking out of these vehicles getting into the name as well? That should really be the real issue. Yeah. So piles of pressure treated water or something. Like oh, the antifreeze or the gasoline, the oils coming out of this stuff into the ground. So I don't know. I think we've got enough regulations because we're not even enforcing the regulations we have. Mm -hmm. Enforce what you have, and then if we you need more help, talking to the towns that have adopted this, it's a great tool when you have a problem child, but it's not. We don't go out looking for this stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you have enough people complaining about the neighbor because they don't like them, you know, that's all another thing. And that aspect of it, aren't you also opening up your, up your stuff to litigation? 
if they decide that, hey, my, my yard's like this, but I know that Joe Schmo here is the yard is worse than mine, so why are you picking on me? Exactly. And you can't have selective enforcement. You'd have to continuously stop with one place and be going down Correct. the Correct. And do, you, do we have the resources to do that? Not at this time. So the individual we had last year with a dilapidated structure and a junkyard, uh, when we took him to court, oh the day of court, he spun it around that he didn't have a junkyard, he has a junkie yard. And, and I thought the judge was going to buy it when we went in to talk, uh, us and the judge beforehand to see where we were, and the other side's attorney came up with that. I'm like, oh my God, I'm not prepared for a junkie yard. I think, What's yeah. a junkie yard? That's just, yeah, there's some junk in it. Doesn't meet the definition of junkyard. So he circumvented pretty good. I thought he had me, and the judge just looked at his lawyer and said, uh, I think the town's made a reasonable order uh, offer, or I think your client should take care of that. So by the time we were done, the house has now been totally removed. We got that condemned and removed. Um, he didn't do it within the time frame required, so there was another $5,000 penalty he had to pay on it, and the whole yard is now all cleaned up. But that's the last thing we want, or I want to deal with, is somebody didn't do it within the time. We don't want to go to court for one. You just want compliance. And, you know, it just escalated from that point there. The people across the street from it uh, love it now because it's all cleaned up. But that took 150 hours, maybe 200 not compared to my shoreland violations where they stripped the whole lot that was probably a couple three hundred hours on that one too and then we had the whole house built out in the resource protection behind the school that was probably another hundred hours on that one we're still working with that so there's 500 hours just on three issues some people you can say hey clean your crap up you drive by the next day and it's cleaned up others you know, it's uh, the individual that had to rip his house down. That was, he enjoys me versus the government. His lawyer was the lawyer that he always hires when he has to fight with the government, is what he told us today at court. And, you know, we just chat in the whole front. Uh, nice enough guy, no issues, you know. This was a hobby almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it eats up your time. Eats up my time. So, you know, I told them if you're moving forward with this, they're thinking of another individual. Work in progress. So we do have a document. I don't know if we can click print on this or they don't allow us, but we'll try to get you guys all a copy and see which way the selectmen want to go with it. So is there real thought about hiring or adding or hiring another second person? Second person. You looking for a job? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it's okay. It's um, okay. We, we had a second person before and Usually, he's going to need at least to be certified in 10 different areas, so that's 10 exams he's going to need to take. Um, the other individual was offered a job in Kenny Bunk after, was he a year here? Maybe a year and a half? Uh, and the, the town clerk has the same problem too. You get him in, you get him trained, and now another town will steal them as soon as they get it because they, they don't care if he's only been working a day. Now I have somebody that's trained. so. I mean, originally they would go uh, 10 hours, 20 hours, um, you don't know. Is there somebody retiring that would love this? But if you hire the wrong individual, it's just going to be more headaches than it's worth. Yeah. Spend more time with that. Yeah, exactly. With the complaints. Yeah. How about the complainer? <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else? Anybody have comments, questions about? Good. Motion to adjourn. Next week. Second. 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 Second.